Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Sarah Reisman, Artistic Director of the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation. Sarah has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Sarah, for joining us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. You, your foundation has a very interesting mission. Talk about the mission of the foundation and how it finds expression in your programs. So the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation was founded more than 20 years ago and historically is focused on supporting art um, in the context of museums and other kinds of community art spaces. And also kind of on a separate track, the foundation supported, um, has supported a lot of activity around healthcare and labor politics. So you had two, two yeah. different tracks. You had yeah. the healthcare and labor politics side, you had the, the arts side. Right. So that's how you, were, you started. Right. Talk about how well, so that that's, has evolved. That's, yes, that's what I entered into the foundation with that as its background and was asked to come up with something, to come up with a, a reposition of the mission related to the idea that the foundation should support art for all. The focus of the foundation has not always been New York City, but at this point we are primarily focused on New York City nonprofits, um, both art artistic and cultural organizations as well as social justice and community organizations. So the, the shift is really about clarifying that where art and social justice intersect is um, potentially a space where art can contribute to the resiliency of communities, um, especially thinking about how New York City is so rich in cultural assets, yet there are communities, I mean, they're not necessarily on the geographic periphery, but on the periphery in terms of access that would benefit or at least should be given a kind of equal access. As soon as you say art for all, right. you're actually making a a very powerful statement. It's a subtle statement, but it's very powerful. Those people who already have access to art are clear. Right. Those people who already are in the mainstream are clear. So when you say art for all, what you're actually saying is you're going to talk about art in a way that the mainstream perhaps doesn't talk about art. How does that find expression in your programs? In the grant making side of our program, we identified about six funding areas, which are not that distinct, but we see them as the areas where art can be more have more public impact. Um, so the idea is organizations that have a public-facing mission, or at least are doing work that reaches a public. It's it's a bit vague, but some specific examples would be community-based museums. So right. past grantees have been the Bronx Museum of the Arts, um, Queens Museum. Currently, we're supporting the Brooklyn Museum with a show called We Wanted a Revolution, which is focused on um, African-American women artists of the, from the 70s. So looking at a kind of under-recognized area of feminism. Artistic activism seems to be almost the umbrella that touches all of the areas of our funding. Artist-centered organizations, because we understand that while there's public-facing activity that happens, artists still need to have a role in shaping culture um, and experimenting in ways that when you're at, at the table with, you know, Arts educators maybe, maybe there, there, you know, there's a different focus towards um, the, let's say, impact of art. Like that art has an impact on youth, right? right? Whereas an artist working in a studio program can develop an idea that might lead to something that would eventually impact youth or communities, but we don't want to exclude one or the other. So you're you're you're, you're looking at social movements. Yes. You're looking at excluded populations. Yes. You're looking at populations that might not be excluded but certainly have been ignored right and you're shaping your grant making to to create this this connection mm -hmm. between audiences who care about art mm -hmm. and the idea of art being everywhere art being also amongst the excluded and, and art being about the excluded and art being about the the, the marginalized really and also art being about um being, a, being an agent of change in the context of uh, issues that affect communities in New York City, but also throughout the country and the world. So an example, we're in the midst of our grant review for 2017 right now. I mean, we had some meetings before I left for Miami, and we'll have more when I'm back. And uh, there are a huge number of um, requests for support for um, artistic programs that intersect with um, incarcerated youth incarcerated adults. I, I, I'm not pleased to see that there's such a need, obviously, but I'm pleased to see that people are working in response to that. 
And it's something we understood would be the case. I mean, many foundations are leading this, like Ford Foundation, Rauschenberg Foundation has a fellowship related to this area. Um, so we're not, we're not necessarily leading, leading the way, but we want to be supportive in relation to that work. As, as you continue to evolve the programs, where do you see this going? Um, one of the things we've done this year and last year with our open call grants, grant making is to have a set of, uh, last year it was 12, this year it's 16 reviewers who've reviewed, help, helped read applications to get an outside perspective. So it's kind of like our, our jury, our panel. Although we make the final decisions internally with the board, there's input from other from people in other disciplines. And so that's that's where we're able to get kind of expertise in other fields. And I think, or from other fields. And I'm hoping that we have um, an opportunity to develop our understanding of the, the different disciplines and the different um, social justice issues. At this point, we're, we're young, we're sort of young about it, we're open, and we, something I had to say a lot to potential applicants was, you know, they'd say, are you focused on environmental justice? Are you f focused on um, arts education? And I'd say, no, we're focused on this open call and learning from the process. And, you know, doing extensive PR around the open call was a, a very different move from the past. Talk about the exhibitions that okay. you stage. So we, um, the, the Rubin Foundation has a space that was set up by Shelley and Donald in 2010 to showcase their private collection, which is a, a separate thing altogether. So the, this, the space is called the eighth floor, literally because it's on the eighth floor of the building where the foundation is located. Um, and we have developed an exhibition program that addresses social justice concerns in different ways. Um, our last show over like spring and summer was called In the Power of Your Care. And the idea was around um, healthcare as a human right, and the interdependencies of care in our culture. So thinking about um, what happens when, you know, healthcare is so monetized and, you know, you have people who can't afford it, um, how do people respond to that? And there are a number of art projects that have done so, like Simone Lee's artwork uh, with the Free People's Medical Clinic, and um, which, which is a kind of uh, restaging of something the Black Panthers did through, from the 60s to the 80s. Um, and also that exhibition focused a bit on disability with an artist who's visually impaired named Carmen Papalia. So the exhibition was a visual art exhibition, but a lot of the programming activated, activated the show. We did a weekend of programming around disability aesthetics, and Carmen led a series of walks for different participants, but at, uh, there are closed eye walks through the city where, say, 15 people in a chain have to be holding onto each other's shoulders clutching in some cases, um, and walking together, led by an, um, an individual who's finding his way with a cane. Oh, interesting. Um, we did have staff kind of monitoring to make sure nobody kind of tripped onto the, into the road. But um, so this is like along Fifth Avenue and through Madison Square Park and, um, you know, wrapping around scaffolding and all kinds of obstacles that um, somebody who's with a disability might, has to contend with in a different way than, than others. So. Carmen led a workshop on something he calls open access. So it's the attempt, the, the closed eye walk was an attempt to recalibrate our sense of uh, perception related to our bodies and our kind of physical selves. Um, and, and that was offered to a general public on Saturday and then on Monday it was focused towards grantee organizations. Um, and that also, we had several round tables that Saturday about um, dis how disability impacts art making and art, like what it means to be an artist with disability and relating to audiences with dis disabilities. And then we also hosted a roundtable with curators. Interestingly, the curators had a hard time speaking about this issue because it's kind of an institutional policy issue. And, it, and for, for a smaller arts organization, they may not have a, the sort of choice to, right. or resources to make, to, to make everything ADA compliant. But going back to Carmen's workshops, his, his claim is, these policies are, are a good idea, but they don't, they don't address what everyone's needs are. So what we need to be committed to is the idea that we accommodate the needs of those who show up. Well, Sarah Eastman, thank you so much for sharing with us the work of the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation. Thank you so much for describing the exhibitions that you stage and the grants that you make, and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for having me. Great.